unafraid, right or wrong. So uh, post-game reaction to the U.S. – well, Washington State upsetting USC. And pretty much the biggest thing that I have to say is I told you so. Told you that this was coming. And also, we learned a few key things tonight. I know people always want to say, you know, don't overreact, don't this, don't that. But here were my three biggest takeaways from the game tonight. You guys, please make sure you like the feed, share the feed. We'll continue the conversation. Um, So the number one takeaway was is that Luke Falk is better than Sam Darnold. That's the number one. We'll go into that in a minute. Also, Marvell Tail, USC's safety. I think he's a sophomore this year. That kid's damn good. That kid's special. He's NFL caliber. And at their corners, Marshall and Jack, overrated. Um, and then the third thing is, is that Washington State, they need to hold open tryouts for their punter. I mean, for everybody at the university needs to be eligible for their punter position because their punter now is awful. I mean, he literally almost lost a game for him with a 19-yard punt and then another punt. And I have to tell you, if you guys are like me, I was totally impressed by Washington State's defense. But I said it earlier today on my Twitter, at George Reister, that this is not a typical Mike Leach air raid team. Their defense is good. That kid Hercules was in the backfield all night. And their offense is just tough to stop. The formula for beating USC is this. You have to stop the run game. Stephen Carr and Ronald Jones, they will ruin your football life if you don't. And you saw what happened when Ronald Jones got one crease, 86 yards to the house. To the house. Okay. Some people are saying, oh, that it's not a upset. No, it is. A, it is an upset because USC has a really good football team. Part of what USC is facing right now is the fact that they have probably the toughest schedule in all of college football. They play 12 straight games, no bye week, and uh, and then of all their games, they're all Power 5 games, and then they play, played Western Michigan, which won 12 or 13 games last season. So the formula for beating USC is stop the run game. Because truth be told, their wideouts aren't pro guys. They're good college wide receivers, but they're not good enough to beat you man to man. And just, I mean, like some of the studs that they've had there before, like you had Juju before. I mean, like just a whole ham. I mean, Robert Woods and and um, the kid down in Jacksonville, they've had so many. And I'm going to tell you the biggest that that, that's a great comment there, because one of the biggest takeaways that I saw is that when the um, when the sideline reporter said what Sam Darnold said, that his confidence was shaken and he looked like it today. He played like a man who didn't have confidence. He played like it because through through the first five games, he's been a turnover machine, literally a turnover machine. He's got eight interceptions on the season. That's Sam Darnold. Eight interceptions on the season, and it should have been 12. Like, you can't, like, be willing to be, say, okay, that, that you know, that, that my confidence is shaken. And that should be a red flag to NFL teams. Not that the kid can't play in the NFL, but that he's not this surefire number one pick like everybody says he is. He's just he's just not. And after the game, you have to be willing to admit that Washington State is the best team in the Pac-12 right now. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. I know some people love Washington, but Washington hasn't played anybody. They they just uh, haven't. And yes, USC can still, quote unquote, save their season and all that. But the reality of it is. You cannot say that you look at Sam Darnold and you say that you see that he's better than the guys that I tweeted out, the list of guys that I would draft before Sam Darnold. You can't say that you would take him before you would take Josh Rosen over at UCLA, who has proven that he can put the game on his back and throw the ball 50 times if need be. 50 times. I'll get into that, that game in a minute. And then Baker Mayfield, 100%, winner. Throw the ball as many times as you need it and 
can be accurate. Mason Rudolph. The, uh, the this is the list of guys who I would take before I played Sam Dar- before I drafted Sam Darnold and Luke Falk out of Washington State. And then you're and you're gonna have USC fans say, "Oh well, let's see how Washington State plays on the road." The reality is is that Luke Falk and this Washington State offense it travels, it travels home, it travels away. It does not matter. And one of the biggest things that I saw that some USC fans are going to complain about is, oh, they're going to say, oh, penalties, penalties, penalties. They say, oh, the, these are bad penalties. Okay, there was penalties on both teams. There was a lot of holding calls, pass interference. Uh, there was all types of penalties. And I will tell you this, one, one thing that I talked to a Pac-12 defensive back coach about was their dbs they get super handsy they grab people they're they're always super handsy and they don't always get called for it and that brings me to story time dbs who like to grab people a lot there was a dude who i played with in jacksonville i think his name was ahmad carroll and I think he went to Arkansas. He was a cornerback, first rounder, went to Green Bay. Everybody was excited about him. But he was a grabber. Like, he was a grabber. And <laughs> they made this dude practice with – he was a cornerback. They made him practice with boxing gloves on. He was a cornerback. But he couldn't stop grabbing on to the wide receivers, getting uh, pass interference penalties all the time. Yep, um, Ahmad Carroll. Made him practice with boxing gloves on. That's the, do you realize how ridiculous that is? Like to be that handsy that you have to practice with boxing gloves on? Because there are a lot of quarterbacks out, out here. I mean, just like the kid Josh Allen over at Wyoming that everybody says is the truth and all that too. He's been below average this year. And when you look at where USC is going for the rest of this year, you look at the stats, right? Sam Darnold, 15 for 29. Barely over 50%. Luke Falk threw the ball 51 times, 340 yards, and two two touchdowns. That's just the truth. I mean, in USC's running game, wasn't even, wasn't spectacular at all. And that's more of a credit to Washington State's defense. That's just the truth. I mean, were, was anybody impressed by what you saw out of Sam Darnold yesterday? I mean, today. And the most amazing part about it was when um, – when Vons made that fourth down and 13 catch, the announcers go, oh, my God, Sam Darnold saves the day. No, did you see he made a bad pass and this dude risked his life to catch the ball? Vons did. Oh, oh, here's, here's the greatest, greatest question I get. This is the second or third time I've gotten this today. When is the last time Mike Leach had a quarterback to put up stats in the um, the, these are the Sam Darnold defenders. When is the last time Mike Leach had a quarterback put up stats in the NFL as well as college? These are USC defenders. I'll ask you the same question. When is the last time USC had a quarterback that was worth a grain of salt besides a Carson Palmer? When is the last time? Not worth a grain of salt in college, but worth a grain of salt in the pros. Tell me that. Tell me that. Hmm. So there's a first time for everything. Now, that's the truth. I mean, they used to say Oregon quarterbacks couldn't play football either. Then you got Marcus Mariota. Hey, it happens. Um, I the, the thing that I was most amazed at is special teams in college, right? Because a lot of teams don't have good kickers. Oh, Lag, Laglo at Indiana is a very good quarterback. Quarterback. I don't know about better than Falk. I like guys who you, you can throw who can throw the ball 50 times a game and still be effective because that's what Aaron Rodgers has to do at times. That's what Tom Brady has to do at times. That's just the truth. Um, I was uh, with, with the special teams game. No, you have to say, though, that you are amazed by what happens in special teams in college. A lot of teams don't have good kickers. But most of all, it's the punting situation. Like, I don't understand. Like, Washington State, they need to hold open tryouts for everybody at the university for their punting situation because they have no punter. They have no punter. None at all. Listen, Kellen, I played with Kellen, Kellen Clemens. Kellen Clemens has not been like a big time stud in the, in the NFL. 
I mean, he's been a backup quarterback largely for the majority of time. And McSorley, uh, mind you, on a whole side note, I have Penn State as winning the as one of the two teams I believe to win the national championship this year. Penn State and Ohio State. That's just the truth. That's who I have. And uh, but I don't think that McSorley is a polished enough passer to be ranked above even Sam Darnold. That's just the truth. And I'm a Penn State guy this year. I know, I know I get it. I know people are upset about it. Because when I looked at this, like every team that has had success against USC, every team that's had success against USC this year, they have stopped the running game. Except, and then they also have turned the ball over in the fourth quarter. So that's why when you get – um Clay Helton telling his team at halftime, oh, guys, we took their best punch. We're a second-half football team. But even in the game against Cal, it wasn't like USC played phenomenally in the second half. No, Cal's quarterback just turned the ball over a bunch of times. That's just the truth. Lamar Jackson. Okay, there, there's a lot of talk about Lamar Jackson right now. Is Lamar Jackson, yes, he's probably going to win the Heisman for the second time, but the reality of this situation, though, is is he a NFL-ready quarterback? I, I have no idea. I have no idea. Because when you look at his team, he has to run for his life all the time. They don't block very well for him. He runs. He, like, I don't, like he's a better passer than he was last year, but I would advise him to stay in college for one more year, talking about, Lamar Jackson even if he wins a Heisman you need to stay in go for a third but his defense is awful like so you, you can't say that he can't win big games when his team is not like like they don't have the same talent and depth that other teams in the ACC even have like Clemson and you have um, Florida State they don't have no Lamar Jackson is not better than Teddy Bridgewater I, I know that we have – oh, his be best win is obviously uh, the destruction of Florida State last year. That's Lamar Jackson's best win. But quarterback I – mean, I mean, but you but, but you would ask, what's Joe Flacco's best win in college? He went to Delaware. I mean, wins in college don't translate into great quarterbacks in the, in the NFL. Like, there's not a actual, like, correlation between those – Two things. But my question to you, USC fans and everybody out there is this. Who do you like better, Ronald Jones or Stephen Carr at the running back position? Because I'll tell you this. Stephen Carr, that kid is the truth. I like him. Like you cannot say one bad word about the kid. Um, uh, Stephen Carr. I mean, the kid is phenomenal. Okay, and then um, tomorrow, though, we're, we're going to see some big games in terms of national championship capabilities. And when, and when you see that, I mean, this Clemson game is going to be big. This Clemson game is going to be huge, especially against Ju Justin Fuente over at uh, Virginia Tech has done a great job, I mean, in his short time there. And I'm excited about it. I am excited about it just like you guys are. My, my last question before I get out of here for you guys is this. Do you still believe or do you believe that, um, that Clay Helton is the guy at USC? I'm just asking. I'm just asking. Do you believe that? Because that's a big statement. Because he's had, you know, he had the young kid play well last year, but he hasn't been able to get his confidence right or anything this year. And I'll tell you this, what I see tomorrow with that Clemson, I'll get into that Clemson-Virginia Tech game tomorrow. I got Virginia Tech winning the game. The main reason why is because Clemson's quarterback, Kelly Bryant, is not a guy that, that you can put the game on his back. He's just not. He's just not. I mean, 
he's not the he's not Deshaun Watson, but I mean, you know, what I mean, you can't realistically expect him to. You can't realistically expect him to be Deshaun Watson. But Clemson's defense is better. The run game is good. But against Virginia Tech, he's going to have to put up at least 30, 35 points because the over-under in the game is 50 and a half. That's the truth. So we are, we, we've already seen one upset tonight. But the question is, will there be another upset tomorrow, though? I'm looking at that Tennessee-Georgia game because Butch Jones always does just enough to save his job. Just enough to save his job. I like that one as the upset tomorrow. I, I don't understand why, why anybody thinks that Alabama is unbeatable this year. I keep getting that. Oh, Alabama, Alabama, Alabama. Hmm. Did you see Alabama the first few weeks of the season? I know that they beat Vanderbilt. It's not even close in terms of talent-wise. But the reality is, is that Alabama has a problem at quarterback. Jalen Hurts is not a good passer. And when you have a team that can reasonably stop, stop the run, they're going to lose when they have to put the ball on Jalen Hurts' arm. And Alabama is uh, giving up 28 points to Ole Miss in terms of the betting line. So you know, I don't care about these ranked teams, man. This is exactly why I give you guys the um, the uh, unafraid top ten every week because you guys get too caught up on these rankings, get too caught up on these polls. Because remember, they go off team potential. They don't care if you've played anybody. They care if you have a good coach. And they think you're going to be good in the preseason. The unafraid top 10, which I put out every single week on a Saturday night, early Sunday morning. It displays the top 10 teams in the country as in terms of not in terms of resume and in terms of like actual wins and losses on the field. I don't care about potential. I don't care about your coach. I don't care about none of that. And that's exactly why Ohio State is not in the unafraid top 10. Washington just claimed, climbed in there. Washington State, who just beat USC today, has been in the unafraid top 10 for two weeks. Now y'all going to listen to me. I, I, in, in the SEC, I don't trust Georgia. I don't trust Georgia because Georgia, Georgia is every year. They always pull a Georgia. No, Ohio State does not beat Penn State. Penn State is going to be in the top four this year. Baker Mayfield is not the best player in the country. The best player in the country plays in Penn State. The best, sorry, the best offensive player in the country plays at Penn State and it's not Trace McSorley it's Saquon my man Barkley man I don't know if USF can go undefeated I mean if a tree falls in the forest and nobody's there to hear it did it really happen they got the quarterback Quentin Flowers who's a good runner not necessarily a great passer and they're not getting in the top four anyway because it's already going to be hard enough it's already bad enough when you have five power conferences and only four playoff spots that means that there's no room for anybody that's not a power five team not named notre dame that's what that means okay yeah memphis did knock off ucla but ucla's defense they, they're giving up 43.3 points a game i mean that's it's like a layup i could i could take my son's flag football team out against ucla and score that many points but you, but back to the USC game. We're we're gonna finish up with the uh, with the USC game uh, with U USC Washington State. I am I am continuously un underwhelmed by Sam Darnold. Some people ask me, "Am I a Sam Darnold hater? What do I have against Sam Darnold?" I don't have anything against him, but he's just being pushed upon me every single week as this as this number one consensus draft pick 
not not just number one quarterback taken, but number one overall player in the draft, and I just don't see it. He's got eight turnovers in five games. I'm sorry, eight interceptions in five games and fumbles as well. And he should have 12, turn- 12, 12 interceptions if DBs could catch. If he stays another year, that's totally different. I'm talking about people who are saying that he is a number one, he's the number one overall player in the draft coming in before this season, and he is completely proven proven that right. And I said that I would take Josh Rosen, Baker Mayfield, Mason Rudolph, and Luke Falk all ahead of Sam Darnold in the draft from what they've shown me so far. Josh Rosen is the best quarterback in the in all of college football this year. I don't know why you wouldn't trust Josh Rosen. He put up phenomenal things as a freshman, got hurt last year, and this year is out there scorching again. His team's giving up 43 points a game, and he'll and he'll go out there and throw for 400 yards and four touchdowns a game, and we'll, we'll give you an, an occasional pick. I don't know what else you want out of a quarterback. I, I yeah, I, I do. I'm a Mason Rudolph guy because I, you know, I'm with uh, oh, uh, Oklahoma State this year. No, not Lamar Jackson. Listen, when I watch Lamar Jackson play, in terms of a college player, there's probably not really a another college quarterback that you would rather have than um, than Lamar Jackson. He can run the ball, he can pass the ball, all these things. But but when you look at pro potential, being able to sit in the pocket, complete passes, extended drives without using your your feet is tough. Will Texas Tech beat Oklahoma State? No. Nope, nope, nope. I don't know whether – ooh, phone fell. Um, I don't know whether that's my – I I'm usually pretty objective about all these things, just to be honest with you. But sometimes my, my – my, in this case, I will be honest, I'm not sure whether this is my, my head talking or my heart talking. Because Texas Tech got – I'm sorry, because Oklahoma State got scorched last week passing the ball. And mm, – and Texas, Texas Tech, against Arizona State, they gave up 45 points, and then they gave up 27 to, to Houston. And I still believe that Oklahoma State's offense is going to be way too tough. All right, you guys, uh, thank you guys for joining me today. Unafraid, right or wrong, the uh, post-game reaction to the USC-Washington State um, win that I predicted. You guys, I will catch you guys tomorrow. Peace out.